I wish I could sit on a bench without sitting on a bench. It would keep my bum clean for a start. For some reason, I keep thinking that We Happy Few was released only a year ago. I look at the mess before me and think it's still in early days. July of 2016 this game was delivered to us. It has been just over five years and it still looks like a game in the beta phases of its existence. I played it when it launched and subsequently forgot all about it, I, I just forgot it existed. Shortly afterwards I played Dark Souls 3 for the first time and got hooked on that and everything else kind of just faded around it, so it's, it, that wasn't really We Happy Few's fault at the time, I just re you know, I just discovered my love of Dark Souls which kind of eclipsed everything else for a while. I rediscovered the game in my library and decided it was worth another look. I did a first impressions which was really more of a look back because I couldn't remember a damn thing about the game, I thought it might as well be a first impression so I can't remember a thing that happened. Now having played as much as I am willing to play over the last week, I have to ask, what the fuck was that? I don't want this whole video to be about the bugs, but I cannot talk about We Happy Few without bringing them up. They were so constant that if you told me that Bethesda built this game, I'd believe you. And usually I start by telling you about the game's story or the game's premise, but I need to step away from that for now and talk about the sheer ludicrousness of the situation. Five years ago this game was released, five years, and it's still as amateur and broken as it was back then. The memories came flooding back after my second hour of play, and it was exactly the same back then. It wasn't worse, it wasn't better, it was the same. I only wish I'd recorded every single bug I witnessed because there were so many. And I think this is unacceptable. This game costs 60 quid at launch and it, it's in this, that, that's mental. That, that's just unacceptable. Oh by the way, I know it was a Kickstarter project before it was a AAA project, so some people might want to defend it based on that, but um, to be honest, I've, I've said before that I don't think um, indie or AAA or Kickstarter or any of that, none of that's a guarantee for a level of quality. A shit game is a shit game regardless of where it came from. I'm getting mad just typing this, so let's get back to the basics here. In We Happy Few, you play as Arthur. There are other characters who you can unlock later, but I could not be asked to reach. You're a newspaper editor who is chased out of town after you stop taking the mandatory pill that makes you happy. In Wellington Wells, you see the drug known as Joy is taken by the residents to be happy and forget what they did in the past. The Wellies, as the town folk are called, and I really like saying it, so I'm, I'm happy they're called Wellies, are so addictive and subservient that if they realise that you're not on your Joy, they will fucking try to kill you. Arthur's memories come back when he goes with his Joy and he remembers his brother who was taken by the Germans during the war and he vows to escape town and find him. He must run Run, sneak, and drug his way through the small town, all whilst contending with the creepy coppers and diabolical doctors, not to mention the random flying robots that exist because, you know, why not? The thing is, I love the story and the setting and how they affect the game's design. Taking joy is dangerous because, like with any drugs, overdosing is an option. I shouldn't say option, I should say possibility. Overdosing is a possibility and you will appear unwell if you do that. And that kind of alerts people in town to the fact that you're not really on the joy properly. According to the game, once you're off your joy, you really can't go back on it without you know, causing yourself huge problems that everyone can see, and that's how they pin you as a downer. That's what they call people who don't take their joy, they call them downers. But that's not the only way you can stand out. If you're wearing the wrong clothes in the wrong parts of town, say you're wearing a raggedy suit in the nice part of town, or wearing nice clothes in the raggedy part of town, people will become very suspicious and outright hostile. If the cops see you sneaking and running about, they will come after you. You need to play the role of model citizen in a world where you're one of the only people who can see the forest through the trees. I like the tactical elements of this game, the whole tactical drug taking, tactical dress the tactical sneaky, it's all very cool, it's, it's a cool idea, it's a fun premise. Unfortunately, the game's design lets it down. Through both the sheer fucking incompetence that led to the unending bugs and by the gameplay itself just not being all that amazing. The stealth would have been passable if A, enemies were a threat anyway, because I found it quite easy to just beat down a room full of police and workers if I couldn't be asked to sneak, you know, walk in there with a bit of pipe, bash someone on the head and just be done with it. B, if enemies didn't randomly appear out of thin air when the game remembers to fucking spawn them because one was supposed to be there and it somehow forgot until that point, and so you have to break away from sneaking to do combat anyway. And C, if the stealth system wasn't incredibly easy to exploit. You could literally avoid curfews and hide from the police by sitting on a bench in front of them, and they just forget you exist. 
You can choke out one enemy and let another come over and look at the body and choke them out and just keep doing it again and again to clear out rooms of bad guys. Hiding in bins and wardrobes always works. Or you can do none of it and run for about 10 seconds and then you're kind of safe as long as you don't run into another person and even then you, you, you just run for another 10 seconds, it's not hard. The townsfolk won't be left in any sort of state of alert after you do this, even if you kill someone. You can just run away for 10 seconds and then run back and everything is normal. You can literally walk up and greet the people you tried to murder. Now from a narrative perspective this makes a level of sense, the joy affects their memories and all that, but it, you know, in execution it means that they're kind of a non-threat. I was hesitant the first time I had to go up and beat anyone to death, but you know, after I did it once I thought, oh this is actually pretty simple, I might as well just do this, there aren't consequences. It's a shame because in theory the game sounds fun. Sneaking around town after dark to burgle houses to get the bits you need to survive and escape, that should be fun. Risking a run-in with the copper should be tense and exciting, but it's, it's not. Knowing a cop could randomly appear because the game remembered it had to spawn one, or having random wellies wandering around houses all night rather than sleeping. I mean, I know they're not supposed to be doing that, they, they're all wandering around in the house saying, oh, I better be going home now, and they're in the house, they're not supposed to be there. They keep just walking in and out of doors while people in the house are sleeping, there are no other beds, these people aren't supposed to be there. Having upgrades that literally remove penalties for going out late and being seen running and crouching, not to mention the upgrades that the character has, you can upgrade Arthur, he's got these um, little traits you can pick, they're, they're nice in theory, but they all work to completely break the game. I could remove the penalty for going out at night, I could remove the penalty for the cops seeing me running and crouching and just being a suspicious fuck. You can even get one perk that allows you to choke out taller enemies, which allows you to sneak up behind doctors and police officers and just take them out with no trouble. And that kind of just works, and all of that works towards killing the fun of the game. I picked the traits because I thought, oh, that'll make things a little bit easier, but then I was wandering around a town at night with absolutely no problems. I should also mention that this is a survival game. I, I sort of did a few lines ago saying you needed to rob homes for the things you need to live. And I don't hate survival mechanics, I can deal with them, if they're not too demanding. I mean, I could do Fallout New Vegas on hardcore mode because I find it quite forgiving. It's the only way I play Fallout New Vegas, actually, when I play it, I, I'm always on hardcore mode because I think, it, I, I think it adds something to the game. Also because your character doesn't starve to death after walking 10 feet. We Happy Few has this irritating obsession with having Arthur become dangerously hungry, thirsty and tired so fast. I mean, I had to carry several bowls of soup, cups of tea and apples with me just to get through one day of being alive. And I don't need to eat that much. Also, there is weapon durability. Weapons break after maybe beating one or two enemies down. It's very annoying. You know, and again, I don't hate weapon durability. I can I can deal with weapon durability in games, but it's another one of those systems that only works if it doesn't get too in the way of things. And the problem with We Happy Few is that the stealth is so unreliable that I had to carry at least three or four shovels with me at any given time to be able to take out dudes if they randomly spawned in. Oh, and you've got a limited carry capacity too. It's the bad kind that slows you to a cruel. I railed on Demon Souls for this sort of thing, but at least in its case you could send items immediately to your storage from anywhere in the map. I mean, I would have just not had one personally. Now in We Have A Few it makes more sense to, I suppose, have this, but uh, it's not really fun. It's not really fun because Arthur can't carry all that much especially when you need to carry extra weapons and craftables just in case you need to break into something. It doesn't add anything to the game. I'm never left thinking, ah, oh, I'm a little bit overweight, I should drop something to keep myself nimble. Instead, I'm thinking, oh, fuck off. In fact, that was a phrase I repeated a lot whilst playing this game. Oh, fuck off, factory worker that spawned out of nowhere, ruining my sneaking and causing me to go through three shovels to take you and your colleagues out. Oh, fuck off, needing to rob four houses to get five pieces of coarse linen to make a fucking boiler suit. Oh, fuck off, going hungry because you haven't eaten in an hour. Jesus, Arthur, are you diabetic or something, mate? I remember finishing Arthur's story back when the game launched then being given control of Sally, a woman Arthur remembers from childhood, to pursue her own agenda. I did not get that far this time. I don't know how many characters there are, I, I sure as shit wasn't gonna waste the rest of my weekend figuring it out, I've said enough. This game is so amateurish and squanders any potential it might have had. The social stealth elements and survival bits are not bad on their own. They could have been great, but the game design fucked them both up. I really wanted to say the F word less this week and I wrote it so many times in this script. The story is pretty good. Though Arthur does begin to annoy about halfway through and I want to let him get beaten to death just to shut him the fuck up, I did enjoy his story. That, that bit was good. I'm a bit confused about the game's overall message about drugs. I don't know what point it's trying to make. Is, is it trying to say that drugs are bad or that people on mood elevators shouldn't be doing it and don't need them? I mean, speaking as someone with depression and with friends who are likewise, I can tell you that sometimes you need pills just to be able to face the day because your brain don't work properly, but let's, 
let's move away from this topic. I really hoped I would like the game is, is kind of a point when I, I everything in theory should make me like the game but it just doesn't come together properly and again it's a shame because I really hoped I would like it. I get Bioshock and Fallout vibes when I look at the game and that's always a good thing. Of course these bugger off into the ether when I play the game because I can't see the swarm through the bugs. I'm sorry I didn't want me to be railing on the bugs again but just look at this is unacceptable. <laughs> How have the devs not fixed this by now? Is it because they've already made their money and don't care? I am going to assume that that is the case until proven otherwise. I was hoping I would play a few year old game and have something to recommend, you know, have an old gem that I really liked, but instead, I've, I've just had a bad week and not just because my diet has been causing me bathroom issues. We happy few, you are an embarrassment of a game. I cannot for the life of me understand how this was seen as good enough to launch. It is ridiculous that it makes me mad because it's another reminder of how the games industry can be just terrible. Y you know, aside from their constant allegations of crunch, assault, harassment and discrimination if, you know, if they weren't enough for you. I close now, reminded why I abandoned this game to begin with. Good ideas are all well and, well, good but execution is key and the developers just didn't pull it off. I am surprised that somehow, after all this time, this game is still functionally awful, just not rewarding to play, not worth your time. Fuck this game. You know what, that's a good enough ending point, fuck this game. Thanks for watching, be sure to check out the other content available on the channel and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content. You can also support the channel on Patreon from as little as £1 a month, check out the link in the description. Thanks in advance and we'll see you next time.